This is EHH uh, Today at the Annual Congress of the European Society of Cardiology in Rome in uh, 2016. And I'm Tom Lucher, Editor-in-Chief uh, of the European Heart Journal. I'm talking to uh, Patrick Morarty and Gerald Watts. Uh, welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Welcome. So, uh, Patrick Morarty is a Professor of uh, Medicine at the Kansas University Center, and uh, Gerald Watts is uh, from Western Australia and Perth. And they're both experts in uh, lipids and atherosclerosis, and that's what we want to talk about. So the Odyssey Escape trial is one of the many trials in this uh, program. So tell us, what was the uh, primary hypothesis of uh, this uh, trial? Well, the primary hypothesis is, is dealing with uh, heterozygote FH patients, which have extremely elevated cholesterol, and they're quite common, one in 200 generally in the world population. And present medical management uh, disallows them to get mo some of them to goal. And in a small percentage of these patients, what's being used is something called apheresis, which is uh, Greek, for, which means taking away. It's kind of like a dialysis where we filter the blood and we can reduce the cholesterol levels by 60 to 75 percent, particularly ApoB lipoproteins. And the treatment is approved in many countries for FH patients, and the treatment is usually once a week or once every two weeks. So our goal was to try and get these patients off apheresis as best we can using one of the PCSK9 inhibitors. In this case, it was alaricumab, 150 milligrams sub-Q every two weeks. And the goal was to see how many treatments you can get off. Now, as I said, apheresis lowers LDL acutely by 75%. Chronically, it lowers LDL by 30% or more. And the interim uh, level of reduction, the mean level of reduction, is roughly about 30% reduction. It's based on a formula called the Kroon formula from a, from a, a German uh, physician uh, that deduced this formula. And so what we decided to do is before every treatment, we, after every treatment of apheresis, we'd give a shot of the alaricumab. So it was a two-nation study, 14 sites, uh, Germany and the United States, and uh, we are stratified these patients based only on how often they were getting apheresis, once a week or once every two weeks, and on LP level A levels. So the first six weeks we started treating these patients, we just continued apheresis on both groups. And then after the sixth week, before the next therapy, we measured their LDLs. And if, the, if any group had their LDL 30% less than it was before the first treatment, then they would stop apheresis. And after 18 weeks, we found a primary endpoint, a 75% reduction of apheresis treatments on the patients that were on alaricumab. And we found over 60% of these patients had no apheresis therapy during the whole time period. And over 90% had at most 50% or more reduction of, of treatments based on the alaricumab therapy, getting their LDLs below 30% compared to what it was. So what was the um, initial uh, LDL level in these patients? Uh, roughly about 190 milligrams per deciliter. But you have to realize these patients, one, were on chronic lipid lowering therapy. They all had a statin? In no, not all of them did. Uh, it was about 50% Yeah, uh, had statins in, in both groups. But they were on other drugs such as uh, azetamide or, in certain cases, niacin or a resin. And as I mentioned, um, this treatment of apheresis, some patients were on over 30 years on therapy. The average was five years for both, for the, both countries. So as I mentioned, the chronic reduction of LDL was 30% or more. So I would suspect that their baseline LDL before starting any kind of medical management was probably over 300 milligrams per deciliter. But over chronic management, it got down to very low. And the comparison of the LDL reduction between the apheresis and the PCSK9 inhibitor alaricumab was about a 50% difference of LDL. So, Charles, what, what did you say about the trial when uh, presented? Well, um, I was quite impressed by the trial. There hasn't been a previous study examining the, the impact of uh, a PCSK9 monoclonal antibody um, on LDL cholesterol and on the need for lipoprotein apheresis in people on apheresis um, and um, to a very large extent really, you know, given that the patients had heterozygous familial hypercholesterolemia, uh, the results were entirely anticipated. So it was a hypothesis that needed to be tested uh, uh, and it demonstrated uh, quite clearly, it vindicated the hypothesis that the proportion of patients started on alirocumab 
uh, would reduce the frequency of aphoresis and indeed come off aphoresis, so entirely expected, uh, but an important first um, and also important uh, for centres that are considering putting on people, uh, patients with heterozygous FH on aphoresis, that uh, a PCSK9 uh, monoclonal antibody uh, should be considered uh, first before proceeding to aphoresis. I suppose the implications of the study are greatest for centres that are using aphoresis frequently in patients with heterozygous familial hypercholesterolemia, uh, namely predominantly in, uh, in, in Germany. Uh, where there are at least 200 centres practising uh, aphoresis. So I think the implications are mainly for those countries and other countries who should be considering aphoresis for their patients with heterozygous FH uh, who are not. It really gives us a marvellous opportunity uh, in the pathway for the management of severe FH defined as homozygous FH or heterozygous FH with CHD in that pathway to put uh, a PCSK9 monoclonal antibody centre stage before proceeding onto more radical therapies like aphoresis or to more potent drugs such as mypermersin uh, in the US for instance or lamitapide. Uh, I mean the end ed editorial we had a little play on the term, on the Odyssey, uh, on the term Odyssey, uh, and termed uh, the, the Alirocumab uh, as the Trojan horse, really, uh, for uh, aphoresis, the, the city of Troy uh, being uh, aphoresis, the Trojan horse being the monoclonal antibody, and the, the viewpoint actually was uh, a viewpoint uh, from the island uh, of Ithaca, and as you remember, that was the journey that Ulysses took uh, from Troy uh, back to his hometown. So, uh, congratulations. Well, very nice. And, yeah. uh, you know, a nice study and an important study. So, how many centers there are in the U.S. doing aphoresis? Only in Germany, we heard about 200, yeah? Right. And they treat about 2,000 patients yeah. in total in Germany. But actually, at this point in Germany, they treat more for LP low A yeah. uh, and cardiovascular disease than LDL, per se. In the United States, there's roughly about 40 centers, and they treat about 500 patients, which... Yeah is greatly uh, lower than it should be. For example, you estimate one in 200 patients are, are heterozygous FH. That comes out to maybe uh, 1.5 million in the United yeah. States. And let's say 99% of them can reach the appropriate goal on present medical management. That leaves 15,000 patients that yeah. are still not a goal that are out in the United States not getting any kind of therapy. So there's a 30 to one ratio of who are getting treated, who should be getting treated. But as Gerald mentioned, I think it is a good sign that monoclonal antibody, the PCSK9, should be the next step after right. statins, resins, azetamide, before we go to the radical treatment of aphoresis. Now you mentioned LPA, and of course yes. so far there was no treatment at all for this right. very condition, and I started to measure that frequently in my patients yes. too that had recurrent events, and uh, sometimes you, you find this, huh? and so... Uh, 15 of my present 50 patients yeah. I have on aphoresis in my center which is actually, we have the largest center in North America, uh, are isolated LPLA with ongoing cardiovascular disease. I actually have an 11-year-old boy who was sent to me from the Children's Hospital because he had multiple uh, basal or artery thrombotic events. And he came to our center to have this thrombectomy, had a thrombectomy for that thrombus that was there. And the only thing that jumped out on his disease status was LPLA of over 150 milligrams per deciliter. His LDL was 60. We measured his carotid wall thickness. I do that in all my patients. And he had a wall thickness comparative to a 45-year-old person. So he's been on aphoresis for the last year. His neurological symptoms are improving. And his uh, thrombotic events, obviously, have been stable. And there was that wonderful presentation following mine of the, of the treating of LP with aphoresis for uh, unstable angina. I don't know if you saw that, but it was yeah. quite... So I think, uh, yeah, in... in in many patient groups, we should uh, more closely look at the LPA under these conditions. And I'm glad to hear you say that. <laughs> yeah, that's a very important thing. It is. So anyway, uh, I think uh, we have now more user-friendly treatment available. Yes. Because obviously with a, a freezes, we do that too in a very selective group of patients. You cannot travel easily and you right. have to come to the hospital. And the cost too. And it, it's cost and it's also time costly. Right. So exactly. I think this is a real progress and uh, we're glad we could bring this uh, to our audience here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Gentlemen for joining. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.